By now, most of you may have heard or may have watched the Harry and Macon docuseries on Netflix. There is mixed reviews, but most that I've read and the thumbs down that I've seen, a uh, majority rules that the docuseries is just not that good. Now, of course, there's Team Sussex and they are all for it. And, you know, um, probably trolling some of the folks that are seeing through all their lives. Now, to me, after watching it, it seems like it's just a continuation of the Oprah interview. All the bombshells that was thrown about the royal family, but there was about 17 proven lies of what Meghan and Harry said. And of course, uh, her half-sister Samantha Markle um, has sued her, I believe, for 75000 And of course, it's a low sum to ask for. However, it's the principle of it. I mean, all the lies that Megan has said. Well, we all know that she is not the only child um, because she does have siblings. <laughs> and it's very well known. And there's pictures floating around the internet. Of course, there's Thomas and Samantha that we know of. But why bash the royal family? Why? I mean, are they trying to overthrow them? Uh, are they plants? Who knows? But I do know, and I could say, in my opinion, this docuseries, aka reality show, sucks. To be honest, I did not watch all of it because it was just boring. And I like, you know, documentaries. I like reality shows, but theirs was just straight up boring because all it was was whining, 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 whining. Here, these two privileged folks, you know, are whining about the most littlest thing. Megan mainly seems like a spoiled brat. Oh, you know, I didn't wear colorful outfits because I didn't want to stand out, um, but... She actually did. I mean, if you look back through the internet during her time there, I mean, she wore all the colors of the rainbow. I mean, there was a yellow dress, there was uh, green, there was all kinds of colors that she wore. Um, so what is she talking about? Everyone's talking about how the royal family said that she could not invite her niece, right? I mean, there's nothing to prove that they said that. I mean, it really, it may have been her. The only family member she had was her mom. No one else. She invited people, celebrities that she did not know, but she just wanted celebrities there to make it seem like she was one of them. Like she was an A-list star. I don't know how much further these two could get with just whining about the royal family and talking about the late Princess Diana. It seems like that's all Harry talks about is his late mother. I mean, it's kind of getting old, to be honest. Not only that, I mean, with his new book, Spare, coming out, I have a feeling that book is probably the same things you're going to hear as in this Netflix documentary. Like, I think <laughs> that publishing uh, house probably got gypped because Netflix beat them to it. With the first trailer you know, we saw, you know, Megan crying and then them showing a stone face Kate, which is very rare in public photos. So this tells me that since part one was a snooze fest, part two is probably going to throw Kate and William and possibly King Charles under the bus in these. Now, I know probably some of you, I mean, I am thinking like, why is the royal family so silent on this? I mean, I know that is, you know, the way they handle things and they've been handling things for centuries. Um, but it's like uh, King Charles needs to um, kind of modernize and just, you know, speak up because everyone's thinking like, OK, why are they not speaking up? I mean, um, with these accusations of being racist, I mean, these are serious accusations that they should, you know, at least say this is not true at least to show that uh megan and harry are con artists are liars one thing that's what gets me is how netflix is just going with it i mean yeah they're making tons of money off of them 
but it's like how far do you go like why are they trying to um pay them for lies that uh, eventually will come out to light that these are just fabrications and lies so this narrative that they're painting is just really like annoying <laughs> because uh it's just lies and here Doria Raglan comes out saying, oh, you know, that's just not good parenting how Thomas Markle has handled it. But come on now, Doria, weren't you in jail? OK, is that good parenting? Uh, you weren't there for your child. So, I mean, it's kind of hypocritical because she I mean, I mean, honestly, I have kids like, like her father has come out and, and I mean, there's pictures. There's pictures of him caring for her, for uh, paying for her private school and high school, going to the best, you know, one of the best high schools in their town, um, college, you know, it seems like he was a very present father. So I don't know. She's, I don't know what she's talking about. I mean, it's really annoying that um, she's just throwing her ex-husband under the bus like that knowing that I mean it's it's public knowledge that she has been arrested in the past and when you're arrested I mean I don't think you could be present in your child's life so well you know not physically so anyways I mean we shall see how part two you know is but a lot of the predictions that I'm hearing is this is the drama part this is where they throw William and Kate and the rest of the royal family under the bus. This is their money maker here.